Hello and welcome back to THM and today I'm going to make myself probably look like a bit of an idiot. I'm going to try and predict the final standings for the 2021 BTCC season. Um, I feel a little bit dirty for doing this um, because I feel like I've, I've underdone some drivers and again if they go on to have a brilliant season I'm going to look a little bit stupid. Um, but anyway, let's crack into it. So I'm going to work in reverse order um, just to spice up the tension a little bit. Um, so starting in 29th place, I believe that this season that's going to be Nicholas Hamilton. Now, of course, needless I say that Nick is an inspiration uh, to anyone with any form of disabilities. And what he does to be able to get into a car and drive it at that pace pretty much every week is unbelievable. And he gets a lot of unfair stick. And I mean that because, uh, you know, the people which give him stick have got no reason, no grounds to go on. Yes, he may not be the quickest, but equally... What a guy and fair play for managing to do it and bring a sponsorship, remember, to pay for this every single season without fail. Having said that, it is a new car and obviously takes a bit of time to get to. And Nick does have, you know, physical disability, so he's not going to be as fit as other drivers, unfortunately. And as an inspiration as he is, I can't see him picking up many points. Um, to be honest, the only thing that we can really hope for is like a, a wet, dry race and Team Hard get the strategy right. Um, or a couple of people falling off track. And um, as long as Nick keeps it you know, safe and tidy, he could pick up a few points. Well, we can hope so. Following up in 28th, um, and it was a bit of a tough decision to get the bottom guys in some form of order. Um, but I have put down uh, Andy Neat. Now, Andy's obviously uh, started in production class in the early 2000s and has come back for uh, from a horrific injury, um, in fairness, in a, in a GT race, um, to come back and carry on racing BTCC. And again, raising the funds to go racing. People can bash drivers for as long as they like, um, whether it be for on-track instance or they don't believe they warrant a seat. But talent alone in any form of motorsport, Formula One, down to BTCC, means nothing if you can't bring sponsorship or haven't got the money to. So um, in that respect, I think if we all had a spare couple hundred grand knocking around, we'd all have a go at touring cars, wouldn't we? Um, but like I say... And he's back for his uh, for another season in the focus. Um, I suspect he'll get some better better results. Obviously, another season under his belt and getting used to driving that car as well. They're running a few of those uh, focuses this year, so he get more feedback from his teammates. Um, again, same as Nick. Hopefully, if things fall in his way, he might be able to grab a point or two. But I don't see too much this season. Next up in twenty uh, seventh place, uh, I have Jade Edwards down. Obviously, racing with uh, BTC this season in the Civic. Again, fabulous, fabulous news to get a female onto the grid and uh, Jade is a, is a really good driver as shown by her outing at Silverstone really mixing it with the uh, the lower end of the grid again getting her elbows out and uh, and really racing before having a couple of incidents which um, put her out the race but I'm not putting her down here for because I don't race her as a driver because I do and again she's she's brilliant if you follow her on socials they're always fun and uh, her and Michael Kreese will be brilliant fun this season you can guarantee that um, but I think it's the first season in the touring cars. Um, for anyone, that's difficult. I mean, Mark Blundell, Formula One racer, didn't do it in the British touring cars because it's such a different kettle of fish. Um, so I think she has big potential to work her way up the grid. But you've got to remember, it's the first time in this car. She only raced the Astra um, last time, last season round. And the first season in the Tourers as well. So I wouldn't expect too much on her. She hasn't failed if she comes this low, and I sincerely hope she doesn't. It's it's going to be a learning curve, and it's uh, going to be a good season to get under the belt and then really push on for the next few seasons. Next up in 26th, I have Sam Osborne, who of course is going to be racing the Focus this season. Proven car, it's a good car, um, but I think it's a bit difficult to judge Sam, you see, because of course he's got the connection with the team. Um, I know his dad uh, invests a lot of money into it, um, but... You can't really judge him on the first season in the MG because that car was miles, miles out of date. Um, and last season, you know, in the Civic, he did get outclassed, in fairness, um, by Jake Hill. So I don't expect too much from Sam. I mean, again, it's a new car. I'm not putting him down here because I don't rate him as a driver. And um, I rate all these guys from first down to, you know, 29th, 30th. He's a new car. He got beat comprehensively by his teammate last year. So I think, again, pick up a couple of points and he's had a good solid season to build on. Next up in 25th, I have another uh, new driver um, to the car that they'll be racing. Uh, that man being Carl Bordley, obviously a really great short oval racer. Back in rear wheel drive again with the Infinity. But again, when I look at the history of what he's achieved and what cars he's been in against 
the new card he's ultimately got to get used to. I think it will be a bit of a struggle, but much like a lot of the other guys in these that have changed cars, I haven't ranked them very high because a lot of the other guys have kind of a season under their belt, a season advantage. People like Sutton and Moffat have got a couple of a couple of years on boardly already, just being in the car and driving it. So again, I expect it to be fairly tough, um, but equally a nice building block for future seasons. Next up in 24th, I have Jack Butel, who of course has moved over to the uh, new Hyundai um, for this season. Again, um, I'm not rating him particularly high in this list, again, because it's a brand new car that he's got to get used to. Having said that, I can't really judge him too much because the Mercedes A-Class, again, was an old chassis, an old car. And I'm having a real problem with ranking all of the drivers this year because A, there's so many different cars, different drivers in different cars. And also, there's not a particular chassis which is miles out of date. For example, you go back a few years, you say, oh, yeah, the MGs are certain to be last because they're 10 years old. Last season, the CCs um, from Team Hard are bound to be at the back because they're old. We've got none of that really this year, so it's a real difficult one. Next up in 23rd uh, is a newbie to the championship, uh, that being Rick Parfit Jr. Now, again, he's going to be driving the Hyundai, which, um, in all honesty, I don't think is as quick at the moment or as good, perhaps, as was expected. But again, that could all change come the first race of the season. But again, much like uh, I was alluded to earlier with Mark Blundell, he, you could be the best driver that you like. You've got 30 other nutters out in touring cars with you. Um, so GT racing, probably slightly more transferable skills than open wheelers. Um, but equally, it's going to be a bit of a soul searching season uh, for Rick getting used to the kind of uh, front wheel drive as well. Because of course, being GT racing, he's used to rear wheel drive. So it will be difficult. But I ranked him higher than the other newbies um, because I think he's just class. He's a class driver, and one thing you can be assured, again, is he's going to be great fun all season. Next up, I have someone that's been around for forever, it seems like, but still barely looks old enough to drive, um, and that being Aidan Moffat. Again, good driver. I'm not sure whether that Infinity suits his driving style, um, as per getting outclassed, basically, by, uh, by Sutton last season. Um, again, hopefully he can get his head around it, because he is a good driver, especially when the, um, the rain is a little bit coming down and the conditions aren't great um, but I, again I don't think this season when you look at the competition and there's not a car which looks miles out of date than the others he could struggle a little. Next up in 21st place is Ollie Jackson again who'll be having another go in the fours. Um, a bit of a breakout last season I've got a couple of race victories which is great to see but like I say with the competition the drivers and the cars this year I think he could struggle a little. Now in P20 I've gone for returning Sam Smelt again very accomplished driver um, but has had a little bit of time out of the British touring cars and in a new car back to front wheel drive in the Toyota Corolla and you've got to remember that the Toyota are now running two car team which would be different for them obviously only running Tom Ingram previously and they only have data last season from one car just Tom's car they haven't run two car team before and also Tom had a very interesting setup on front wheel drive it was very loose and I don't see many drivers that will find that kind of setup helpful next up breaking into the top 20 I'm going for a team dynamics new boy Dan Rowbottom now it may be a little bit controversial putting a big team like dynamics um, this far down but you got to consider two things number one Dan um, in my opinion isn't quite the level of Camish or McNeil at the moment He's had a season out and also you've got to consider that Dynamics no longer have the backing that they used to in terms of uh, US and Honda factory support as well. So it could be a bit of a, a rebuilding year for Dynamics. Now I'm going to combine 18th and 17th positions into one and those be the uh, Cupra boys of Glyn Geddy and Aaron Taylor-Smith. Um, I think Taylor-Smith over a season will edge out Glyn Geddy um, purely over experience. Obviously uh, Aaron Smith has run for quite a few seasons in the touring cars. I think the Coupe is a brilliant looking car. I'm not sure whether it'd be quick out the box since I'm putting them in 18th and 17th overall. But I think that the, the Cooper obviously is a very accomplished uh, world touring car. It looks good and I think it'd be a, a hard season for Team Hard. I don't think they'd be quick in the first few races but when they get the hang of it, they get some good results together. Now heading into the mid table, I'm predicting 16th place will be everyone's favorite driver, Michael Kreese. Now, I really want him to do much better than the 16th, of course I do, um, but I think that it's he's had a good few seasons in the touring cars, um, he will kick on a bit this year. It's just with Creasy, obviously being a great guy, I don't know a single person that hates him, um, but 
he does where he's in the midfield constantly at that kind of level at the minute. He does get involved in, in incidents here and there, which you're bound to do when you've, like I say, got 30 other nutcases around you. Um, but it'd be a solid season for Creasy. Good few points, Halls. 16th overall, middle of the table. Now, in 15th place, I've gone for Chris Smiley. Again, another season in the Hyundai. He knows the car. He always gets decent results wherever he's been, whether that be at BTC or, again, in the Hyundai. I haven't really got too much to say on Smiley. He's a decent driver, he pedals well, and he does a decent job everywhere he goes. So, yeah, we'll stick him in the middle, 15th place. Now, up to 14th, and it's another BTCC returnee in Dan Lloyd. Now, I think that Lloyd has the potential to go much higher than this, but there's a couple of things which hold me back. Yes, he's been doing a lot of TCR racing, which is obviously good to, to tick over, but again, not been racing BTCC. And second to that, the PMR Astra kind of grounded to a halt last year. I've say got a couple of uh, young drivers at opportunities, but they didn't really have a real season. So they've effectively a season down on everyone else now. So I think it could struggle. But having said that, Dan Lloyd, great guy, and he'll learn a lot off Mr. JP himself. Now I'm going to group together 13th, 12th and 11th um, because they're all BMWs. Now in 13th place, I've gone for Adam Morgan, who again be driving the 3 Series for the first time this year. Fantastic driver is Adam Morgan, a real battler, but again, it's a new car and he will be having to learn to go from front wheel drive to rear wheel drive, so um, he can get some results out of it when he gets used to it, but will he get used to it in time to put up a real challenge to top 10? I'm not sure. And I've gone splitting the two, uh, the two Sicily cars, um, is Tom Oliphant, again WSR, solid team, solid driver, he does the job, he gets good results fairly frequently in fairness to him he has improved a lot but again just on the edge of the top 10 I reckon and going into 11th is the other BMW of Sicily which is Tom Chilton a great driver should really be top 10 really considering uh, all of the cars and experience that he's had and driven but again it's going to rear wheel drive it's a new car a new team so it will take a bit of getting used to now we're creeping into the top 10 but before I release the top 10 Let's just take a minute, if you can please subscribe to my channel. I'm not going to be begging anyone, I know the BTCC fans are great, but I get a hell of a lot of views in comparison to subscribers, so please just take a minute of your time, hit the subscribe button, keep me happy. Now, in 10th position, I'm going for team hard leader, Jack Goff. I really rate Jack as a driver. He's obviously taken a, a difficult step to go to team hard, and to be completely honest with you, he dragged that CC to places where it did not belong, he even won in that thing. I think he's a brilliant driver. I think the coupe is going to be 10 times the car the CC was, um, and I think when they get their act together um, towards the mid to end of the season, he'll be scoring points pretty much every round, providing any accidents, of course, and I think he could drag it to a podium, maybe even a win. And in ninth place, well into the top 10 now, I've gone for WSR new boy, Stephen Jelly. Now, as a driver, I rate Stephen. I think he's quality. I don't think the one series that he had and the focus he had before were quite up to scratch. And equally, when he was at WSR the first time, I don't think he was quite ready for that drive. But he's a brilliant racer, one of the best starters off the grid of a car you will ever see. And I think knowing how good that WSR BMW is, I think he's going to drag that to a lot of points finishes. Points to make prizes, top 10 finish. Now, in 8th place, I've gone a little bit against the grain. I've done a lot of, uh, of this basing on last season and how I've seen him drive before. But I've gone for Josh Cook in 8th. Probably the most unluckiest driver of 2020. So many accidents, so many retirements, none of his fault. Josh, a great guy, great driver really quick driver at that he's had a few seasons with a Civic providing he doesn't get caught up in accidents every race uh, much like last season he'll be well up there p7 is Hyundai's newest star Tom Ingram now Tom is probably you know when you look at it on an ability point of view one of the best drivers naturally in a British touring cars I love watching him drive the car looks so on edge all of the time the only thing which puts me down in seventh is I'm not sure how good that Hyundai will be it will be a good car, yes, but will it be as good as Toyota's works entry this season? I don't know, but one thing you can be sure of is Tom will drag that to places it does not deserve. Next up in P6, my personal favourite driver, and it's taken me a hell of a lot not to just bung him in first position, um, is Jason Plato. Last year was really odd without him. Um, it was odd not seeing people online start kicking up a stink when he's done something wrong or whatever the case may be. But Jason did not enjoy that season out, I can assure you that. 
Um, he's going for 100. He only needs a couple more wins to make it to 100 race wins. The Astra's okay. Like I said, did miss out of a lot of testing and development last year, but Plato's different gravy. You don't win almost 100 races in this for being an average driver. He's going to be hungry, he's going to be fast, and he's going to be controversial as always. Into the top five and fifth, I'm going for Jake Hill, who's going to be racing the Ford Focus for this season. Again, as Rory Butcher kind of showed us last year, that the Focus is a really quick, really solid car. And Jake, as we know, apart from his absolutely rotten luck with engines last year, is a brilliant driver. He will be up there. He drags that Civic to decent results, considering how bad his season started. He done really well, so he will be up there. I'm, I'm getting probably a fifth place vibe from him. In fourth place is, needless I say, the highest of the returning drivers, and that is former triple champ Gordon Shedham. Gordon's back, Flash is back, and he's back in Dynamics, a team which he knows and loves. The only th reason I'm putting down in fourth is, like I alluded to earlier, of his teammate Dan Rowbottom is their backing's been pulled a little bit from uh, from Honda and Yuasa leaving, so I'm not sure how good that car will be, but Shedden is brilliant in the touring cars. He always has been, and he probably always will be. He's going to drag that to some podiums, probably even a few wins, so yep, fourth place overall for Flash. Now, time for the top three. And in third place is Toyota new boy, Rory Butcher. I'm expecting him to have a great season. Rory's a brilliant driver. He's always on edge. He's always dragging cars to results. They probably don't deserve, in fairness to him. And in terms of the team, Team Toyota GB, I've seen them testing personally at Snetterton um, a little bit earlier on in the month. They look great, and you've got to remember, they've got all of Tom Ingram's data. Not a bad guy to have data from. And they're now running two cars. So they're going to have double the data from both of the cars. I think Bush is going to have a great year, and it's going to be exciting to see him. Now, second place, and bridesmaid again, I think it's going to be Colin Turkington. I'm not going to spend too much time on Colin. Um, we all know he's a brilliant driver, super, super consistent. I can't see him winning many races this year. I think maybe three, four, five races he'll win, but he just finishes in the top 10 almost constantly. So he's going to be there, and he's going to be thereabouts. I'm predicting second place. And that means only one thing, that my number one driver for 2021 and my champion, I think it's going to be Ash Sutton again. Now, he's won both of his titles in rear wheel drive cars in the Subaru and in the Infinity. He's driving the Infinity again this season and there's one thing and this is the only reason why I'm putting him ahead of Colin. After Croft last year obviously he had a couple of accidents that he did not need to have and nearly chucked the title away last year but after that he looks completely different driver. He was being a little bit more cautious but still picking up points and I think if he can carry on doing that this season you can't beat him. He's an unbelievable racer, the car suits him, and they're going to have more data from Bordley and Moffat's car, and they've got a little bit more financial clout teaming up with Team Hard. So, that was my full prediction of the season, every single driver, where they're going to finish. I've probably got them all wrong, you're all going to agree, or disagree with me, some of you might agree with me. Um, whatever I've got horrifically wrong, please leave in the comments below and we'll have a little discussion. I love interacting with all you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this. I'll probably visit this at the end of the season and see how horrifically wrong I am and want to delete this forever off YouTube. Speak to you next time.